call from the referee, but either way, a great run by Marty Dula. But it's going to come oh, back. Offensive, uh, We've had a fair amount of penalties in the game. That's the biggest penalty. That's going to push Maine South back. It nullifies a great run by Marty Dula. Sure does. I'll tell you, he's outside. only a junior when Faldetta and Rabino and company graduate next year. The feature player for the Hawks, Marty Dula, and he looks like he's going to be a good one. Tell you what, that's a tough penalty to take right there for the Hawks. Third down now, third and eight, so that changes the situation. Let's see if Mike Castrava, the yep. senior quarterback, goes to the air. Valdetta, only man in the backfield, and Castrava does go to the air, and he goes to his screen man, but not pulled it over, and he gets away, but he will not get the first down. He, I thought he had a chance to break it. Well, an interesting play call from Maine South. They kind of weirdly set up screen. Mike Kalakitas for Glenbrook South was right there. He smelled it out, but he missed the tackle. The Maine South player able to pick up the gain, but not enough for a first down, and an, Rather weird call by Main it South. It sure was, and the Titans were not fooled at all by the screen pass. They had plenty of pursuit there, so fourth down, and they're going to punt the ball away. Pavlik is back, and he makes the catch at about the 10-yard line. Pavlik to the outside, just around the 20, almost evades the tackle. Great special stopped. team yeah. play. I'll tell you, the Main South special teams has been phenomenal today. That was number 89. We do not have him listed. Great defensive play. How about the punting of Alex Barton, number 33? He just boomed the ball. So yeah. the Hawks back Glenbrook South up what could have been tough field position. Now they've got Glenbrook South back a little bit. The special teams have certainly not made any mistakes Man. today for the Hawks. Doing a great job. Still 7-7. Seven to seven. Six minutes and clicking here in the third quarter from Maine South High School. The Titans from Glenbrook South have the ball right now. And it's given outside to Polina. Clean on the outside for a gain of about five yards on the outside. That's the little scissors play that Glenbrook South run. The fake to Godfred and the give to Chris Polina. The two back picked up a little bit of yardage. Pretty good gain, about five yards, second and five. The way things are looking, any point scored from here on in could mean a, a win. Very close game here. We're deadlocked seven to seven. Conference championship possibly on the line and a berth to the state playoffs. Shane Witter gives to Godfrey. Godfrey on the outside, stops, doesn't have much room, but still keeps his feet going and possibly close to the first down, probably a yard or two short. Well, we've been talking about the power running of Clint Faldetta. That time, Brad Godfrey, not nearly the size of Faldetta. Godfrey only 5'11", 165, but showing some great power that time. Picked up a couple of extra yards, didn't get the best of spots, it appeared. Looked like he had dragged the defender more than that, but they're going to list it at third and two, so... Yet another big play for the Glenbrook South offense, and so far, Maine South defense has been up to it. Shane Witter, under center. Here's the call, and they give right up the middle, and I believe it was Chris Polina, and I think uh, the Titans, some hard, yeah. Some hard hitting inside. Glenbrook thinks they got the first right. down. We're still waiting for the call from the official. Not going to be short, yeah. so Maine South defense again with a great defensive play, not giving Glenbrook South anything inside. Less than a yard to go, I'd say foot, foot and a half from the first down, so it's fourth and one here. And once again, they don't get this, and it's a big, big play for oh, Maine man, South. This is a gamble. They got nine or ten men up front, and they're going to call a timeout. I think they have 12 men on the field. Well, in a close game like this, Bill Hopkins again, extremely mad. That's going to be a timeout they may want later on. Looked like Clint Faldetto was the guy that was not supposed to be on in their short yardage situation. Hopkins obviously upset. You're going to need every one of your timeouts in a close game like that, so that's a big break for Glenbrook South. And how about they're deciding to go for it on fourth and one from their own 34-yard line? <laughs> now they got time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Change their <laughs> call. It's a gutsy call, that's for sure, because... Yeah. Not only does it give them the ball, but I think it gives the Hawks big momentum if they stop them right here. And on the other hand, deciding to go for it, showing great confidence in your offensive players. And there you see the importance of this game. Two teams that have been on the, the same track this season. Both teams at 3-0, 6-1 overall. Most likely both teams will be headed to the state tournament. Uh, Glenbrook South has got a much easier final game, Maine East, so they should win their last game. Maine South, even if they win this game, still have to face Evanston in their final game, so a little bit tougher road ahead for the Hawks. 
Here's the big fourth and one play, and the give is up the middle to Gottfried, and I think he might have got it on a second effort. Let's see where the mark of the ball is. It's a first down. Yep, I'll tell you what, he got the first down, but he did not get it by much, so nope. the, the major gamble by the Glenbrook South coaches going for it in a tie game at fourth and one on their own 34. It pays off. They give it to Brad Godfred straight up ahead, and he barely made it. Looked like they ran right behind number 76, Jason Tisch, Aaron Gassman, their center. They've been working that right side of the main south line. Polina and Godfrey in the backfield. Shane Witter looking to the pass. The play action must be the first sack of the game. A bunch of blue, red, and black on him right there. I believe the first guy to get there was number 75. There was a whole host of Maine South Hawks. Mark yep. Soroka, who's been a little bit quiet of late, number 77. He was underneath it all, but the play action fake not working. Maine South knowing that play was coming, and I again go back. Here's a good look at the replay. Yep. Black jerseys all over the Titans today. The Hawk defense doing a great job. Play action fake didn't work that time. Certainly didn't. Loss of five on the play, second and 15. And this is a give to Godfrey, and he will get nowhere. Clint Faldetta, number 24, not only a good runner, plays that tough inside linebacker spot. Third down and 15, so the Titans may have to go to the air. We have not seen much of George Heckenbach since the first quarter. Let's see if the Titans throw to him. I don't believe he's caught a pass since the, I think he caught two in the first quarter, and, that's a, and one of them was for the touchdown. That's the last time we've seen him get his hands in the ball. Single coverage on Heckenbach. Yep. Heckenbach out to the left, and that's exactly who they're looking for, but throwing behind him, and Shane Wetter is not happy with himself right there. Well, he, he read, even if that wasn't a play call, I think when he came to the line, he saw the single coverage. That was a little slanting pass that they've thrown earlier to Heckenbach. He threw it behind him. Main South defense hold, and the Titans will have to punt the ball. Dietrich and Kuffner back for... Main South. Woodfield is doing the kicking for the Titans, and he gets it off, and it's a short kick, and it's going to be grounded at about the 42-yard line, 43-yard line. Not one of Matt Whitfield's best kicks. The Main South players did not know where the ball was. If that would have taken a bad bounce, could have hit off of one of them, but either way, Hawks get pretty good field position at the 44. We got 313 left, and I'll tell you what, Keith, we're going to be coming down to a tension-packed finish in this one. Well, John, you said during halftime that you thought it would come down to the end, and I think there's no question about that, the way it's going right now. Kostraba hands off to the outside. Big hitter easily has the first down for it. Call it a gain of 11, and that's Marty Dula, who has been very impressive here in the second half. And getting more impressive as the game goes on. Number 42 starting to, to challenge Clint Faldetta's feature back roll, picking up some good gains on that right side of the line. Excellent play action fake for the Hawks. We have not heard much from Faldetta here early in the third quarter. There you see the replay. Dula, very nice run on the outside for a gain of 11. Flags are throwing. Went back to the same play. Possible procedure or Maybe one of the Titans stepped off sides. Yep, that's what it is. Motion on the Hawks, so that'll move them back. So from a second and one, it now goes to second and six. That changes the situation a little bit. Sure does. Well, Funny you don't enough, really I see Maine South run to the outside very much. No. Everything's between the tackles. Right. I had thought Dula had got the first down. It looked like he was beyond the, the uh, first down marker, but obviously he wasn't. Now it's second and six. There you see the penalty yardage. Glenbrook South, three for 25, five for 40. And this one again giving them to Dula, Marty Dula. I think they went to that play maybe one too many times. The fake to Faldetta to give to Dula. That time Austin Collins, number 47, right there on the tackle. And again, excellent play, but they might have gone to that one too many times. So that brings up a key third and six. Just about every third down the rest of the way is going to be a big one. Third and six, ball. One yard short of the 50-yard line. 49-yard line here. Under two minutes left to play in the third quarter. Kostraba hands off to Feldetta, and he is not going to get it. Hit at the line by a host.